Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And just like that, we have come to the end of 2021. For that, we racked up a few of our top camera picks of the year based on only two categories this time around, which are the most innovative and the best hybrid cameras, each of which pertains to their own unique strengths and features, I must say, and the collective decision here at tech360.tv. So without wasting any more time we have left in this year, let's start with the first category, the most innovative. Now it's worth mentioning that the ones on this list are the top of the line flagships which are clearly made for true professional shooting wildlife or sports photography given all of them sharing 30 frames per second burst modes capabilities using their respective electronic shutters. Starting off with the Canon EOS R3, a mirrorless counterpart to the 1DX series but not officially the flagship according to Canon, equipped with a 24.1 megapixel back illuminated stack CMOS image sensor and DJI CX image processor which allows 12 frames per second with its mechanical shutter or blackout free 30 frames per second in high speed electronic shutter burst mode and shoots exposures as fast as 1 over 64 thousandths of a second. Eye control autofocus is Canon's latest feature brought to the R3 which provides the user's line of sight as the main focal point and racks focus automatically detected by the sensors within the EVF. Interestingly, something that was first introduced to a film SLR camera dating back all the way to 1992 with the EOS 5 and now more improved to give even better autofocus aids as well as priority subject detection such as eye, body, head and even vehicle detection modes. Not forgetting to mention its video capabilities of 6K 60 frames per second, 12 bit RAW, Canon C Log 3 picture profile, and high frame rates up to 4K 120 frames per second. Next up is the Nikon Z9, a camera which is one of the latest to be released and reviewed by us in 2021. It comes with a full frame 45.5 megapixel sensor, almost double the pixels compared to the R3. It also comes with an innovative 4 axis tilting LCD touchscreen for portrait or landscape orientation shooting. Something we have not seen in this form of construction on any other camera, most probably to compensate for weather proofing as our best guess. So it definitely won some brownie points for this category. It is also capable of shooting up to 30 frames per second in JPEG formats or 20 frames per second in RAW and an astonishing 120 frames per second but only at 11 megapixels which is basically slow motion in video mode that is available for most mirrorless cameras. But with that amount of still images, it should take you a while to go through all of them, but we found it to be very precise when locking onto a subject with Nikon's hybrid face detection autofocus and assist such as 3D tracking. Video mode supports up to 12-bit RAW 8K 30 frames per second in H.265 formats and a recording time up to 125 minutes, which in my opinion is still very much a taxing file to work with. Most of the time shooting at 4K ProRes 10-bit 422 would likely be more sufficient in 2021 but unless you already own a really powerful machine to process that 8K footage and willing to deal with the rendering times and also look to future-proof your camera then the Z9 seems to have kept up with the market demands. Speaking of future-proofing, lastly in this category is the Sony A1. Another camera released early this year which also came with 8K 30 frames per second recording with s Cinetone picture profiles that was also brought to the A7S III as well as 4K 422 10-bit up to 120 frames per second and 16-bit external recording. Very much a more video-friendly camera and has more of that cinematic look compared to the other two on this list. It came with a 50.1 megapixel full-frame stack back illuminated CMOS sensor and is also capable of blackout free shooting up to 30 frames per second in high plus continuous mode using the electronic shutter with an addition to shoot in high efficiency image file formats from the usual JPEG and RAW to help with file sizes when editing. Autofocus is as good as it already was in the A9 Mark II but takes an even forward direction in the A1 with AI based real time tracking with newly developed subject recognition algorithms and takes this advantage to implement eye autofocus bird mode or every other eye you can think of. The A1 real time autofocus assist will track that green box onto a subject like glue. A reflection to Canon's dual pixel autofocus performance but slightly a tad bit better in our opinion. Right, so moving on to the next category is the best hybrid cameras something that most content producers and creators such as myself would likely to be targeted to. 
in hopes to have the best video and photo outputs without the flagship specs to keep the price tag within the affordable range. Starting off with a camera that was also recently released as of late 2021, the Sony A7 Mark IV. A personal favorite of mine considering how it translates a major improvement from the A7 Mark III, which I am recording with for this video. A jump from the 24.2 megapixel sensor to a newly developed 33 megapixel sensor and the Bion's XR image processor which is now capable of 759 phase detection autofocus points similar to the flagship Sony A1 and covers roughly 94% of the image area in both stills and video. You still get 10 frames per second in high plus burst mode like the one you get in the Mark III but is now compatible with CF Type A Express cards for faster write speeds. Color science has also been improved with 8-bit 420 to 10-bit 422, removing that green tint that was annoyingly prominent in most Sony cameras before it. But the biggest improvement of all is that now it comes with a flip out screen and also an improved EVF from 2.3 million dots in the Mark III to 3.6 million dots in the Mark IV. Recording limit has also been removed and shoots up to an added 4K 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second in 1080p. But the biggest advantage that lies within the new 33 megapixel sensor will likely be more favored towards still photography for sharpness and detail given pixel counts, well, counts more in photos than they do in video. But if you're one of the many who do tend to utilize cropping your footage, you do get a 7K oversampling image for all of your high resolution needs. Next up is a camera that was slightly released in 2021 due to the fact that the newer version of it was announced on the same day and to be have rumored to release sometime next year. And that camera is the Panasonic GH5 Mark II. Yet another camera on this list with heavily video focused features such as 4K 60 10 bit 420 and 4K 24 10 bit 422 and even 6K anamorphic 10 bit 422. In addition to the expanded video specs, the GH5 Mark II also gains the video tools as Panasonic has developed for its more recent models, including a red frame around the screen while recording, a wider choice of aspect ratio guides, and the ability to shoot portrait orientation video as well as live streaming options allowing live broadcasts over the web either across Wi-Fi via smartphone using the Lumix Sync app. In terms of still shooting speeds, the GH5 Mark II is about average for us. The 6K photo mode however offers up to 30 frames per second bursts and in 4K photo it goes as fast as 60 frames per second. The downside of course is a drop in pixels. In 6K mode your images will be 18 megapixels in size, in 4K they're 8 megapixels. Also, these shots are actually frames taken from MP4 videos rather than traditional stills, so you can't shoot them in RAW. Probably due to the small physical size of the GH5 Mark II Micro Four Thirds sensor, it's not the greatest stills performer if you're looking for superb low light performance or ultra detailed landscape images. Lastly on this list, which manages to get on both categories, is yet again the Nikon Z9 purely because of the Z9's capabilities to capture both video and photos at its highest capacity of 8K raw footage and 120 frames per second still images at 11 megapixels from its full frame 45.5 megapixel sensor. Needless to say that it is a big sports or wildlife photography camera to be considered as a hybrid on this list, but Nikon has seemed to be very aware in recent years over the competition gearing towards both modes as the go-to specs most users are looking for. Kind of the likes of what Sony and Canon had been leading the pack for quite some time now. So we're more than glad to give kudos to Nikon making its mark in developing more hybrid focus specs where they can. Especially within the Z series jumping on board with the mirrorless train slightly later than the rest of the brands. Given that Nikon had really good professional photography focused DSLRs at the time of this hybrid trend. So we do hope to see Nikon and its plans to maybe fit the features of a Z9 into a smaller body such as the Z9. 6 or Z7, then perhaps we could see it appeal to more hybrid based users. But that is all we have on our list for the best of 2021 cameras edition. We hope you agree with our top picks of the year and would love to hear from you guys for some honorable mentions of what you think would have made it on our list or what you look forward to seeing in 2022. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video. Till then, bye bye.